Is this new mutated virus more dangerous? Is it more deadly? Does this mean that the vaccines made by Pfizer and Moderna are ineffective? Hi everyone, my name is Diana Toro and I'm a medical school student at the Medical College of Georgia. Today we're going to talk about the new strain of coronavirus that has emerged in the UK. Here's a brief review about the SARS-CoV-2 virus that causes COVID-19. It's coated in this protein that we call spike protein. And the spike protein on the virus binds to a human receptor called ACE2 on our cells. It's this interaction between the spike protein and the human receptor ACE2 that mediates the fusion between the virus and our cells. Let's take a closer look at the SARS-CoV-2 virus. We can look inside of the virus and we see its genetic information encoded in a single strand of RNA. The RNA in the virus encodes for specific amino acids and amino acids are the building blocks to any protein in this case the spike protein the RNA in the virus is basically a blueprint or a list of instructions on how to use amino acids to build proteins any mutation is a change to the genetic code in this case a change to the RNA Mutations can also occur in the DNA of our own cells, but we have better machinery that is adept at fixing those mutations as compared to the virus. Any mutation to the genetic code can, for example, result in a deletion of an amino acid or a change in the amino acid. Mutations occur randomly as the virus replicates. In fact, the CDC estimates that the SARS-CoV-2 virus accumulates one mutation in its genome about every two weeks. Sometimes these mutations are called silent mutations in that they don't change the amino acid, so they don't impact the structure or the function of the spike protein. But sometimes they do, and these amino acid substitutions can affect the structure, shape, and function of the spike protein. And those strains with a mutation that confers some sort of advantage to the virus are more likely to replicate and may spread to other people, leading to what we call a dominant strain. This particular UK variant of coronavirus is called B117. And it doesn't just have one mutation, it has a group of about 14 to 20 mutations. These mutations occur primarily in the region of the RNA that encodes for the spike protein. The COVID-19 Genomics UK Consortium, or COG UK, they were created to regularly sequence the entire genome of the SARS-CoV-2 virus in order to monitor for genetic changes. They released a report on the B117 coronavirus variant that includes the following graph. What this shows us is that up until now, the SARS-CoV-2 virus was accumulating no more than a few mutations at a relatively consistent rate of time and estimates suggest that it was accumulating about one to two mutations per month. But suddenly, around September, a new variant appeared with 14 changes to the amino acids. These were not silent mutations, the amino acids were substituted with new amino acids, and three amino acids were deleted. The appearance of this cluster of mutations suggests that this new strain of coronavirus likely emerged from a single person. This person was likely someone who was immunocompromised or immunosuppressed and was chronically infected with SARS-CoV-2. What this created was a breeding ground for the virus. This person was likely treated with convalescent antibodies that put selective pressure on the new strains of virus in this person. In other words, only those strains with mutations that were advantageous were able to replicate. Let's take a look at the molecular structure of the spike protein. Here is the top of the spike protein, which binds to the human receptor ACE2, which I colored in pink. And this entire spike protein is made up of amino acids, just like any other protein. Specifically on the top of the spike protein, there are these three regions, which I colored in green, called the receptor binding domains that bind to the human receptor ACE2. And I'm going to show you an important mutation that occurs in the B117 strain at one of these RBD regions. And I highlighted it in yellow. 
We're comparing this B117 strain of coronavirus in the UK to the coronavirus that was first identified in Wuhan, China. Here the amino acid asparagine was replaced with tyrosine at position 501. Asparagine is represented by N and 501 is the position and Y represents tyrosine, which is the new amino acid. Scientists predict that this substitution allows the spike protein to bind more tightly to the ACE2 human receptor. Now, whether or not this translates into any clinical significance is still unclear. There was also a variant of coronavirus that emerged in South Africa that shares the same exact mutation, but it's believed that the strain in South Africa emerged independently from the one in the UK. Since November 2020, this particular variant of coronavirus has become prevalent in the southeast of England, and it's believed to account for 60% of recent infections in London. The CDC reports that there is no evidence yet that this new strain of coronavirus causes more severe illness or increased risk of death. Although this new variant is predicted to be more rapidly transmissible based on its acquired mutations, there is very limited data on its transmissibility. Even though this strain may predominate in a specific geographical area, this does not necessarily mean that it's more infectious. In other words, it's unclear whether or not the prevalence of this virus is due to its acquired mutations or due to the behavior of people who are to blame for its transmission. So does the emergence of this new strain of coronavirus mean that the vaccines made by Moderna and Pfizer are going to be ineffective? The most likely answer is no. There would need to be a significant number of mutations that occur to the spike protein in order for your neutralizing antibodies to be unable to recognize the spike protein following vaccination. This is also what makes mRNA vaccines an amazing technology. With traditional vaccines, like a live attenuated vaccine, we would have to find ways to culture this new strain of coronavirus, inactivate it, and administer it safely, potentially still causing disease in those that are immunocompromised. Now, if the genetic code to the spike protein changes, we can take just that portion of RNA encoding the spike protein and deliver it to our cells as a new vaccine. While there is no immediate danger right now, the more opportunity the virus has to replicate, mathematically speaking, the higher the probability it will acquire a mutation that will confer some sort of advantage. The more people who get vaccinated, the less opportunity the virus has to replicate and mutate. If you want to learn more about mRNA vaccines, please check out my last video. Thank you for listening and stay safe.